Uh, good afternoon. My name is Lacey Wilson. I'm here for the She Can, We Can project here at UNCG. i um, honored to interview Commissioner Carolyn Coleman today on Wednesday the 12th, 2022. Uh, thank you again for your participation in the project. Thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to have you. Um, so I think when we, if, as we get started, how would you describe your beginning journey into politics? Actually, it started when I was maybe nine or ten years old. Really? Uh, my mother was an activist. Mm -hmm. um, we lived in Savannah, Georgia on an unpaved street. Mm -hmm. And when it rained, um, the, the, the water would come up to the side of the, the street and of course cars would have to go almost into a person's yard to avoid the water. Sure. And when it was dark, it was really dark. No street lights mm -hmm. or anything of that na nature. So once a year, and she and some of the neighbors would just go door to door and get a petition signed to try to get the streets paved and try to get um, the water abated there. <laughs> and of course, nothing happened. <laughs> and, and of course, I said, well, something must, must happen that's different mm -hmm. from year to year. But it just didn't happen. Right. And so it was after I had gone to college, in fact, mm -hmm. that um, we managed to get something involved in that community working for us. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was really my um, in first engagement with politics because we didn't have any black politicians then. Adam Clayton Powell was it. Right. And um, so I, I, I just would go with my mother from door to door and, and I heard her talking to the people about the importance of doing something to enhance our community. Mm -hmm. And so that was really my involvement initially right. in politics. Of course I wasn't running for office then, <laughs> but um, I did run for some school positions um, and was elected. And so. I guess that was the beginning. <laughs> that sounds like the beginning to me. Um, what do you remember? Uh, was it school president? What position did you win? Student council. Student council. Yes. What do you remember about being a part of the student council? Well, people always expected you to do more than you were able to do, <laughs> first of all. Sure. And, and you learn how to, um, how to run a campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it's a different level right. from where we are now. But um, you just learned that you could make a difference. And I, I became one of the students that um, at that time, they were not requiring teachers to um, pass the in national teacher's exam. Oh. And so I was one of the students that uh, the teachers chose to help do research to help them prepare for that. So oh, wow. I, I had an experience of working with adults mm -hmm. much earlier than most children my age. Absolutely, and your activism, it, it started with your mom taking you, helping with yes. these adult problems as well. That's it. Yeah, and the, none of those petitions went anywhere to what you remember, not until you had graduated? Well, we, we'd take them to the city council, mm -hmm. county commission, um, but <laughs> they didn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I guess, actually, um, it was when I graduated from college and went to Memphis, Tennessee to work, mm -hmm. and um, A.W. Willis was the first black person that I knew to run for political office. So I worked in his campaign. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've, we've come so far when I think about all that, that I've been able to do in terms of uh, my political experience there. Mm -hmm. But um, he lost the election. Mm -hmm. But that was the beginning of true activism mm -hmm. and black people being able to see that we could make a difference in the community. Absolutely. What do you remember about that first campaign and working on it? Well, again, um, I was in over my head all the time <laughs> because I, I was able to work with adults too, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. even in Savannah as, as a teenager and, and, and a student in college. I was able to work in a campaign, so mm -hmm. this this was a time when you learn that um, if you want to make a difference, you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I started working in A.W. Willis's campaign, and I remember that night when he lost, mm -hmm. 
I really thought he could win. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, 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 you're naive, sure. and you think, oh, gosh, this, this is just so exciting. And we, we gathered at his campaign headquarters on that night, and um, when he lost, he shed a tear. Mm. And I, I knew then, this is for real. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, here's a man that is crying. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, almost everyone else in the room was crying. Yeah. Because I think we all expected more. Yeah. I mean, whites just didn't vote for black people. Mm -hmm. And many of the blacks were not registered to vote, mm -hmm. didn't see the importance of it. Um, didn't know the difference that it could make. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was just, I, I, as I, I think back on it, it probably gave me the fuel mm -hmm. to keep going throughout my life as, as I've worked in this area. Mm -hmm. Because once you see the, the uh, what you think about, really, the history that your people have gone through to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I've not seen a man cry in a campaign since then. Mm. So I, I knew that it made a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, you continued your activism, would you say, since the beginning of just your mom helping you with the petitions? I did. Mm -hmm. um, 1960, I was a student in, in high school, mm -hmm. and um, our history teacher invited the NAACP vice president to speak to our class. Mm -hmm. And um, he came, Curtis Cooper was his name, uh, he came and spoke to us and told us that the NAACP Youth Council um, was preparing to sit in. Well, some of us had heard of, of the sit-in demonstrations here in Greensboro, mm -hmm. um, and he invited us to come to one of the meetings. So we went to the meeting, and gosh, I mean, that was like the world had opened. Wow. You know, we had that connection then mm -hmm. with the Greensboro Four, and we, we had the thought that even in Savannah, we could do something. Mm -hmm. So we, we planned and prepared for that, learned a bit about nonviolent activities mm -hmm. and um, just everything that we could about the movement mm -hmm. and the kinds of things we needed to do in order to be successful. And so uh, I joined the group, mm -hmm. and on uh, the 16th of uh, March, 1960, um, we had our first sit-in demonstration. Where did you sit in? Uh, well, I was at, well, let me, let me go back and talk a bit about this. Okay. Um, we divided into groups of fours. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the group that went to Levy's department store and of course, they went to McCrory's, Crest, um, Silver's, just about any department store, which they don't exist now. Right. It's a smaller Walmart, that's mm -hmm. what they were. Sure. Um, so when we, we walked from, we gathered at a church, had prayer, and just had the words of encouragement coming from some of the other students and, and adults. We had a youth council advisor who worked with us um, we walked from that church, First African Baptist Church, down to Levy's. Mm -hmm. When we were not to tell anyone what we were doing, but that day somehow the principal found out, and he met with us and told us that we were foolish for doing something like that. Mm -hmm. He said, first of all, you're never going to get into college. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I mean, just discouraging you. Right. Secondly, you will be known around this country as a troublemaker, and you won't find a job. <laughs> well, he didn't know who he was talking <laughs> to. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> uh, there were students in that group who were leaders in their class. Yeah. And so, I mean, this, this just really made us angry mm -hmm. and more determined to do what we were going to do. So we, we walked from that church down to Levy's, and when we arrived at Levy's, there were white people all around the front door. So someone had told mm -hmm. someone sure. that what, what was going to happen. Um, we walked on in, the doors were open, they just stood there holding the doors, walked on in, went directly to the lunch counter, and we were told by the waitress if you sit here, we're going to have to have you arrested. Mm -hmm. 
we can't serve you, so you might as well get up and leave. Mm -hmm. And um, at some point, we looked at the menu, um, and the police came and um, told us we had to leave. And of course, we wouldn't leave, mm -hmm. so they arrested us. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, in Savannah, I mean, we, we, we celebrated every Sunday, mm -hmm. continued to um, uh, sit in, and um, the very first Sunday when we had a public mass meeting, and, and back at that time, they didn't have um, like a Visa or MasterCard. Mm -hmm. Each store had its own card, so credit card. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we told them what had happened, people started throwing credit cards from Levy's and other stores on the floor. Oh, just wow. this, this church had a balcony, mm -hmm. and they just threw the cards over the balcony. Mm -hmm. They were so angry mm -hmm. that um, they knew that they had to do something. Mm -hmm. And so for 18 months, every Sunday, we had a public mass meeting at 4 o'clock, just moving from church to church around the city. Mm -hmm. We were successful. Mm -hmm. We were the first, I believe it is, the first uh, city where we were able to um, be successful with a boycott mm -hmm. in in Savannah, in Georgia, mm -hmm. but but of course in Savannah. Yeah, which is incredibly impressive to really think about, yes. especially with the, at that time, so many were going with far more violent means and had more violent reactions to yes. these protests. Um, had, when, when you think back on this protest and the, com the community support that you did get, um, what stands out to you? Just the fact that people stood together. Mm -hmm. No one had to tell you the purpose. Mm -hmm. You knew why you were there. Mm -hmm. And every day another group of students joined us. And so, um, you know, people just were, were wonderful. I mean, the students were, but <laughs> I'll tell you this, the, the, when we returned to school after having been arrested, there were students who thought we were crazy too. Sure. Why would they do something like that? I mean, if you don't have something within you that gives you that incentive to do more, mm -hmm. you, just, you just accept life as it is. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important now that people get up from there mm -hmm. and do something about what's going on in this country. Mm -hmm. They need to do it. And so when you're, when you're thinking about, when, when you're thinking back on your activism roots and the, the activism you participated in, at that point, did you ever think you would run for political office? No. <laughs> and I'll I, I just tell you that sure. there, there were no role models. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, while you knew about Adam Clayton Powell, mm -hmm. you didn't think, oh gosh, I could do something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and Shirley Chisholm, none of those others had come along at that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you didn't see black people in positions like this. Mm -hmm. And I, that doesn't mean that people didn't dream about it, mm -hmm. but gosh, to think of yourself being another Adam Clayton Powell, that's almost impossible. Yeah. It's kind of an insurmountable uh, mm -hmm. pedestal to exactly, be on. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so what other, uh, and then you, it was at, you did that in Savannah, and then you went to Memphis for this first campaign. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, let's make it wasn't, sure. wasn't quite that easy. <laughs> <laughs> it never is. Never. Um, I, I, um, when I graduated from college. Savannah State? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the NAACP had been banned in Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another whole story sure. there. But it had been banned in Alabama. And um, my girlfriend, Edna Jackson, told me that um, the NAACP was looking for some students to go back into Alabama and register people to vote organized youth units and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court had ruled that the governor could not ban us, and so that's how we were able to go back in mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, Alabama. Got to Alabama, and of course, black people were deal having just dealt with Bull Connor and Martin Luther King marching in, in Birmingham and whatever. So it wasn't a campaign around politics as much 
It's just another set of demonstrations that we were doing. Mm -hmm. We were there just after um, the the Selma march, mm -hmm. Selma to Montgomery, and um, so the 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 precepts were basically the same. Mm -hmm. You organizing for a sit-in demonstration uh, to register people to vote in a community, are uh, just simply organizing as sit-in demonstrators. So they were all very, very closely related. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's if you really want good political organizing, mm -hmm. become a community organizer. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, that's the way I did it mm -hmm. and several others. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, as I've looked back on this, many of the people uh, who now serve in political office served as a community organizer first. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend, uh, Edna, that I talked about earlier, uh, was just elected to the General Assembly or the, the um, Board of Delegates, I think they're called, mm -hmm. in, in Georgia, legislative board, they're called, in Georgia, mm. um, having served as mayor of Savannah just six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the basis of her learning that skill too. Absolutely. Yeah, there's so much to be learned about community organizing that can then take a next step to exactly. actually being in political exactly. office. Um, as well as the importance not to over uh, the importance of registering people to vote is such an under mm -hmm. so undertold power that we yes. often think about. Yes. Yeah, when when you're even when you're campaigning now or when you've campaigned in the past, um, do, do you sometimes find that people are not excited for particular elections? And then does that make you think back on what it costs so many of yes. us to vote? Yes. You, you know, the thing is, um, people do get tired. And what we're going through right now with uh, trying to get voting rights extended, mm -hmm. um, we went through that in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And so um, you, you soon learn that um, maybe you get tired, you get a little weary, but you have to pick up and go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, I knew so many of those people. You know, I didn't know Mega Evers, but I know Merrily Evers, mm -hmm. um, Fannie Lou Hamer, mm -hmm. Aaron Henry, mm -hmm. just people like that. Mm -hmm. Charles, Charles Evers. Uh, Merrily, well, I said Merrily Evers, but anyway, mm -hmm. people of that caliber that have done that very same thing, mm -hmm. have gone through all of the suffering and whatever, mm -hmm. um, and and you start thinking, well, my goodness, this is such a small contribution that I'm making. Um, I need to do more. Mm -hmm. I can't sit here and, and not do more. And so I think all of that sort of... Um, keeps you moving mm -hmm. forward. It's all <laughs> because fuel. Because it's, 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 it's easy to go back. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Easy. It's, mm -hmm. it's all fuel for the next yes. steps. Yes. Um, what do you remember about registering people to vote in Alabama? Um, well, as I said, we, we were there just after that Selma, to, well, during the Selma to Montgomery March, just so many people died. Jimmy Jackson mm -hmm. was killed right there out of Anniston, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Boynton, just, oh, oh, Martin Luther King Jr. had come through there and, um, you know, was, was working in, in Birmingham. So you, you have to remember all of their contributions. But more than that, you, you have to remember that um, things did change. Mm -hmm. Things are still changing. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was the incentive. Mm -hmm. And then what was the next step out of Alabama? Did you go back to school? Were you still in school at this time? No, mm -hmm. no. Um, I left Alabama and um, went to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a little bit different because there we were registering people to vote after Andrew Goodman, Cheney, and Swerner had been killed in Mississippi. Right. So you can't help but think, yeah. gosh, it could happen to me. Right. But it didn't. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we um, worked on some the main streets for black people shopping and whatever, just walking up to people, asking them, 
are you registered to vote? Mm -hmm. And if they said no, believe it or not, we had to transport them downtown wow. to the Board of Elections. And, you know, all the silly questions that they were asked, how many bubbles and a bob soap, and um, how fast can a man run if he's walking two, two miles in, 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 in an hour, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, just the fact that it was so difficult, and of course, having come along after um, Vernon Damer had been killed in his house in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, all of that stuff just it, it just worked on you, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes you didn't want to sleep because you wanted to get up and just keep going. Mm -hmm. And 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 that, I guess that that gave us that energy too. Yeah. To go on. You really need it in like spaces like that. Yes. Where so much of the community resists exactly. the change you're trying to do. But exactly. It's such a needed change. Mm -hmm. And how people don't realize now. You can you can just take a form and give it to the average person in the average city. Mm -hmm. They can complete that form, give it back to you, and you take it to the Board of Elections, and they're registered to vote. That's it. Didn't have to transport you or anything of no, that nature. No weird questions about bubbles oh, or cold. Oh, gosh, no. Mm -mm. It's, no. It's a, just a great result of the activism that you were a part of, mm -hmm. truly. Mm -hmm. And you had some victories. Yeah. You know, we had some victories. Mm -hmm. And we have to hold on to those. Oh, God. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> it absolutely is. Yes, yeah, that's the problem. So what happened after Mississippi? Okay. Um, well, I worked throughout Mississippi. Okay. And um, that was registering people to vote, um, just, just canvassing, trying to get them organized into NAACP units. Mm -hmm. um, and um, after Mississippi... I went to Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Well, that was another situation where the um, the organizers themselves were the sanitation workers mm -hmm. who were discouraged because one of them had been killed on a truck, mm -hmm. one of the one of the uh, garbage trucks, at a time when it was raining and that that uh, the the part of the truck that scoops trash up, mm -hmm. pulled one man up when he was sitting on the back of the truck, mm -hmm. and um, of course it killed him. Yeah. He had no insurance. Mm. And I can remember now seeing the men walking with placards in front of themselves with with the, the, the um, chains around their necks, mm -hmm. uh, um, a string around their neck, mm -hmm. said, I am a man, mm -hmm. because this man died and he had no benefits from the city right. to bury himself, well, for his family to bury him with. Yeah. So, you know, I worked there, and um, we started demonstrating with these gentlemen to help them g obtain their rights. And, of course, things were not quite moving as, as quickly as we thought they should. And that's when we called him Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying we, I was a student. Right. Uh, formerly a student, mm -hmm. but these were adults mm -hmm. that we met with every every night then, um, talking about what needed to be done, and they decided to call him Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. who incidentally was supposed to be in Greensboro, North mm -hmm. Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, at the time that he came to Memphis. Right. So there is a connection between the two there. Yeah. Um, but uh, we demonstrated, and this was where A.W. Willis was to mm -hmm. Memphis. Um, we demonstrated there. Um, I organized youth units there and, and a college chapter. Mm -hmm. So we had young people involved as well as uh, adults. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about Memphis was that um, in Memphis, there were a number of Republicans who were African American. Mm. That's because of of uh, um, Arkansas, mm -hmm. which had a number of the Rockefellers there, mm -hmm. and they, I guess, were able to get people in that area, right. black and white, to organize as Republicans. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit different for us to sure. see that. Um, there were black Republicans, and they seemed to fare well, a mm -hmm. little bit better than than here. But that was when many of the people who now 
Democratic were Republicans. It was, and, and, the, and the Republicans were Democrats. It was before that party switch. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> so, so, so then I, I, I worked all over um, Mississippi and um, did a number of things from organizing to just teaching young people about the movement mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, left there and went to Memphis. Um, the, all of this is working for the NAACP still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when, I, when I arrived in Memphis, um, I was involved in a number of things, and, and including um, the fact that James Meredith was on his march from Memphis to um, um, Ole Miss, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where he was going Trying to, to register. school. Yeah. yeah. So, so we were in that that demonstration. Um, we were just involved in a number of things, and 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 when we started working with the sanitation workers, Martin Luther King came in, and things just made a, a tremendous burst of excitement mm -hmm. in the community. So uh, we, um, we marched with, with King, and um, it, was, it was a situation where um, we, we had young people who didn't understand that you couldn't win with bricks and guns and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So in one of the marches, they started uh, throwing rocks in the windows of the stores, mm -hmm. that were department stores downtown. Mm -hmm. And that was that first march that we attempted, um, we had to end because they were so violent. Um, and and, and um, so, you know the story with, with Dr. King there. Yeah. I, I, I know that um, perhaps that was the time when I, I really became angry. Now, throughout all of this, you know, I really didn't become angry. Mm -hmm. But when a man is killed because he's just simply fighting for his rights, mm -hmm. um, you know that something more has to be done. Mm -hmm. And of course, we did demonstrate and, and everything, and finally were able, years, some years later, to get our first black mayor. Mm -hmm. So um, I had left Memphis at that time, and um, I'm sure A.W. Willis was one happy man to see an African American involved there. Absolutely. Yeah, um, but we had several uh, African Americans who um, became county commissioners. Uh, Vasco Smith became one. Jesse Turner Sr. Mm -hmm. became one. And that was a proud thing for us because, as I said, we had not seen a black mm -hmm. who was elected to office. I did have the opportunity to work with Fannie Lou Hamer mm -hmm. and some of the others who worked out of Mississippi mm -hmm. and in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, we had several victories. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you a little story about um, Mega Evers. I, I, I was not there when he was killed. Mm -hmm. I was still in, in college. Um, Merle Evers tells a story of having um, been in her living room, our kitchen, I believe it was, um, waiting on him to come home from a, a demonstration where he was registering people to vote. And the kids were in there playing. And um, she heard the car when it drove up. And so she said, well, well, we'll wait on him to get out and everything. And he had things to bring in out. So he was getting things out of the car when um, someone shot him, killed him. Mm -hmm. And um, she said that she, following, you know, following his 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 uh, death, um, ran out. She didn't know whether to stay in with the kids and protect them. She knew something had happened that was not good, or mm -hmm. uh, whether she should go to him. And of course, she ran to him, and um, um, he was dead when 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 she arrived. Um, she says that she scrubbed the sidewalk that he died on up until her last days in living in Mississippi. Mm. 
she never could get his blood out of that sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, just to see that happen, yeah. every day you walk out of the house, yeah. you have to look at his blood that's embedded in the, in the sidewalk. And of course, it, it, it had to take a toll on her. Oh, for sure. So for us who supported her and, and her kids, um, it, it was it was a devastating blow. Although I was there not when he was killed, but afterwards, because you couldn't pass the house without thinking mm -hmm. of Medgar Evers and Merrily. And and now I think we don't we don't treasure the people and the sacrifices that they made for us to get where we are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 a situation where. You have some NAACP members, um, but not enough. You have some folk who work with Action Network, but not enough. I mean, they're contented now just to sit at home and do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and my, my family teases me because they said, I can be as sick as I don't know what, but when there's an NAACP meeting, I somehow get well. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know, you you have to do something. Right. You just you just can't sit there and watch television. Mm -hmm. um, Sunday's football game. Mm -hmm. Sunday's for us was spent at NAACP mass meetings. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, that doesn't mean you don't go to a football game, mm -hmm. but you have to challenge yourself to do more. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's worthwhile just sort of, it sounds to me that it's hard not to want to do more when you can see the victories and see what the sacrifices yes. people got just to get these victories yes. that many of us are still fighting for exactly. right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, was that Mississippi? Yes. That was Mississippi. Yeah. I'm trying to keep track, <laughs> trying to keep the timeline straight. Okay. Uh, following Mississippi, um, well, I lived in Memphis, but worked in Mississippi okay. and Louisiana and Alabama, all the s southeastern states. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I then was sent to um, to Alabama, mm -hmm. and um, what what happened in Alabama? I, I talked about this just a bit a few minutes ago, but what happened in Alabama was the NAACP had banned, been banned them. And when when the courts, the Supreme Court ruled that we could go back, mm -hmm. I was one of the students, along with my friend Edna, mm -hmm. who went to Mrs. Uh, to Alabama to organize. And of course, we did that. And 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 the good thing about Alabama, there had been enough organizational work done prior to our arrival mm -hmm. that it was a little easier than Mississippi. I, I think it was. Sure. There's some people who might say, well, all of it was tough. <laughs> but <laughs> None of it's easy <laughs> in that same yeah. breath. But um, we, we, we were very successful there in terms of the registration. Um, we, we had, um, well, let me go back for just a minute and sure. talk about um, the the fact that um, the NAACP was banned, and why? Okay. Um, the the organization was, of course, at that time the only one that was working in Mississippi, and um, so the governor did not want teachers, black teachers, to be members of the NAACP, mm -hmm. and um, so he decided to ban the organization. Now show you the connections. The way it happened was Reuben Hurley, who was the NAACP's regional director for the Southeast region, mm -hmm. was in her office working and um, a black person, I'll just leave the, the gender out of it, uh, so the governor will never know <laughs> who knew, but uh, uh, um, the black person was in the governor's office just working, cleaning, and that kind of thing, and heard the discussion where they were going to go to the NAACP office and take the membership list. Mm. That person got on the phone and called Ruby Hurley, mm -hmm. told her what was about to happen. Mm -hmm. Ruby Hurley and W.C. Patton, who was our 
registration director, got in the car and took a back road out of uh, Alabama and went straight to Atlanta with the NAACP's membership list. Mm -hmm. Now, if they had gotten, if the governor had gotten the list, those persons would have certainly been fired. Mm -hmm. But of course, they knew the importance of, of uh, being members of the great organization. Mm -hmm. And so um, when, when that happened, of course, governor's people got to the NAACP office and they, Ruby Hurley and W.C. Patton were gone with the list. No one was in the office, no list was in the office, or nothing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we had to go to court and fight this all the way to the Supreme Court. Well, Edna and I, and um, at that time, the person who was our political person um, was Mr. Patton, and um, Althea Simmons was um, a, a NAACP organizer, and Mr. Patton was living in Alabama, so Althea and I, and of course Edna, um, decided to just organize in Alabama. And so that's how we were involved with the demonstrations that took place from uh, Selma to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. um, and there were so many others that, smaller demonstrations in other towns that was taking place. So we were a part of that effort, but um, had Ruby Hurley not had that connection with the black community, right. she never would have known and would have been right there when, when the governor's people came yeah. to take that list. So people did what they could in their own way mm -hmm. uh, to make things better. Absolutely. They knew the importance mm -hmm. and um, teachers, you know, continued to join, although they were in Alabama and Ruby Hurley was in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, they got their memberships sent out through Mr. Patton, who was still living there, um, to the NAACP. Wow, yeah, that's a harrowing tale. Yeah. Yeah, the, the risk of just like making the call, the, all the membership could have been gone for yes. all of Alabama. Exactly. Yeah. Jobs, if, if they could starve you to death. For sure. <laughs> you know. And keep you from getting hired anywhere that's else. That's it, that's it. Yeah, it's major. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what brings you to Greensboro? Well, um, I was in my senior year of college, and um, Edna was the talkative one. Uh, we were just in demonstrations together mm -hmm. in Savannah. And she was, we were at a luncheon, I think it was an NAACP convention, and she began talking with the people at the table who happened to have been white. Mm -hmm. And they, they talked about um, the fact that they heard the NAACP was going to hire some people and would she be interested? And um, so she said, well, I'm still in school. Carolyn's about to graduate, so. Let me have you talk with her. Mm -hmm. And so she introduced us. <laughs> um, they introduced me to the NAACP. Mm -hmm. And um, then they asked, and, uh, well, you think she would go to to um, work for the NAACP? And then they said, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Um, and when they spoke to me, I said, well, I won't go by myself. <laughs> I'll go if Edna goes. Mm -hmm. So here she is, a year from graduating. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what her mother, uh, what her grandmother said. She was living with her grandmother. But she knew she had, she could only be gone for a year. Mm -hmm. So we both went to Birmingham mm -hmm. and began our work there. Mm -hmm. And um, after a year, she came back to school. And then she got married. And so we never worked together <laughs> again uh, in Alabama as, as, as a team. Sure. But we were just a wonderful team. And right now, we're still the best of friends. We call each other room. Aww. We'll call, call each other. We talk just about weekly. Um, so, you know, it, it was a good experience. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll try to remind each other of some things that we wanted to forget. <laughs> but most of the time we laugh about stuff now. That's it's lovely. wonderful how time can make a difference. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. 
And so what brings you to Greensboro? Oh, to Greensboro, <laughs> you know, get, get the thing in there. So um, after Edna went back to school mm -hmm. and I stayed in Alabama for another two years, I believe, mm -hmm. Um, the NAACP, I was, I was, we were called task force workers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I stayed in, in Alabama and Mississippi, just working around as needed. Mm -hmm. And um, then the NAACP decided it would hire full-time youth workers. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of those. Um, we'd always had one national director, mm -hmm. but I was one of those um, three that were hired as, as just field directors. Okay. And so they sent me at that time to, um, to Memphis, Tennessee. And from Memphis, they sent me back to Alabama, mm -hmm. I mean to, to North Carolina. Okay. And of course, I've been here ever since. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that must seek trouble <laughs> because I came here, I was here two weeks, and the Klan and Noxy had their shootouts. Mm, mm -hmm. It was another couple of years later when when um, we decided to uh, to to um, do demonstrations across the state, organizing for registration, and and just hap happening to um, organize our youth units. Mm -hmm. And of course, they had demonstrations across the straight the state. So it seems like everywhere I went, either a demonstration <laughs> took place or I was or I had just finished one. <laughs> so, um, so of course, I, I, I um, just became involved in the demonstrations as a result mm -hmm. of um, the need to to do something and protesting the killing mm -hmm. of the Klan and Nazi. Yeah. And of course, we, we've, we've had demonstrations against everything. Yeah. And, and um, that was just one that continued for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's one that continued for mm -hmm. quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I um, actually, I reflect on the, the time when the uh, vice principal told us that um, We'd never get in college, right. or never get out, never get a job. All of that wouldn't, wouldn't get a job. Um, and I and I, I had an opportunity, just lying in the bed this morning, and a friend called me and said, "The governor wants to talk to you." And I said, "About what?" <laughs> he said, "You just come and talk to him." <laughs> well, Jim Hunt was mm -hmm. was. Um, had been governor, right? And so they were still calling him governor. Gotcha. And Ben Ruffin, who's now deceased, called me back, and he said, "You have to talk to the governor." <laughs> well, I was okay where I was. I was comfortable, mm -hmm. um, and and um, like North Carolina, and I said, "Okay." He was such a jewel. He called me back, and he said, "I'm coming to see you." <laughs> so. I said, okay, I still didn't know what, what is going on. And he came to my office and he said, I'm going to run for office again. Mm -hmm. And I've got all my staff but one. Mm. He said, I need you to come and join me. Wow. I, but I, did, I didn't know whether to take that job because what I said to him was, suppose you don't win. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do then? Right. And of course, he said, "Don't worry about that. I got that taken care of." And um, came on and and um, began to work for the governor. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the governor's staff says um, that if there was a demonstration, I couldn't pass it up. So I'm, I'm just kind of jumping around now, not talking about that experience of working okay. for the governor, but. Um, the the um, the fact that the employees in Memphis and there was just a, a new Kmart store, mm -hmm. Kmart plant, a warehouse I think it was, not a plant, um, was opening here, and um, they were paying the employees in Greensboro less than they were paying employees in. 
Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And their, their excuse was, well, Atlanta's a larger city, so it costs more to live there. Well, the ministers here decided to demonstrate against the uh, Kmart plant. Mm -hmm. And so that Sunday morning, a um, woman who was a congresswoman now, Congresswoman Adams, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I were in church. We were in the same church. And uh, afterwards, um, well, before we ended the service, my pastor said, I want you all to pray for me. Now I'm going to demonstrate with some Kmart workers. He said, I don't want you to come out, just just, just pray for me. Mm -hmm. And so I said to Adams, I said, why don't we go out there? <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, no, I, she taught at Bennett College. Mm -hmm. She said, I have papers to grade. Mm. And so I said, well, you'll, have, you'll, you'll be out, you'll have time to grade. <laughs> So we went on out to Kmart. The police told us, if anyone that crosses this line, step off the sidewalk, you will be arrested. Mm -hmm. I said, Adams, let's do it. <laughs> and so she said, okay. And we just went and right behind the ministers, stepped off the sidewalk, and we were arrested. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how we were going to get out of jail. Right. No one knew we were going wow. except the ministers who were awesome. out there with us. Right. So she said, you know, you must be crazy. How, <laughs> what, what are we going to do now? I said, well, whoever gets the ministers out will get us out. <laughs> and so we, we were arrested mm -hmm. there. Um, it was it was kind of funny because following the arrest when we got downtown, no, before we got downtown, Adams had never been arrested. Mm -hmm. and so she, she had her handcuffs on. She just, like she could take them off that way. Right. And I said, no, the more you move them, the tighter they will get. <laughs> right. Um, so we got down to the jail and um, they you know, interviewing us, names, address, and so forth. And I thought, my God, now I'm not with the NAACP. Right. I'm working for the governor. Right. Well, he wasn't the governor, but we'll be the governor again. And um, so when he said, what's your name? I said, Carolyn Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that whisper was going to take it away. Right. <laughs> and of course, um, we were, we were charged and and, and um, placed uh, in the cells, and and of course um, the the lawyers that came to get the ministers out got us out, mm -hmm. and I I really didn't think about what well I could lose my job. <laughs> this man is running for political office. Right. This this is a state that is not the most desegregated state. Right. And so, you know, I, I said, I, I just didn't know how that was going to work. But um, we had a talk mm -hmm. that Monday morning and um, um, we both knew what we had to do. Mm -hmm. And so he said, okay, just do your work. Don't do this again, please. <laughs> So I managed to stay there in the governor's office and work for him for um, nine years, really. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was primarily Memphis. Mm -hmm. When when we um, when we left when I left that job after his serve having served eight years, mm -hmm. um, I was talking with uh, Katie Dorsett who had been a, um, a, a a county commissioner, mm -hmm. and her husband had taken her place. And she was saying one day, well, Warren thinks he's, he's going to step down. He's not going to run again. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I wouldn't mind running. Mm -hmm. Well, this was, you know, just before we were leaving office. Mm -hmm. So I came home, talked to Warren, and decided I would run. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's how I, I got to Memphis, and I've stayed in Memphis. <laughs> Since nineteen seventy nine, and that's you mean Greensboro, Greensboro. Yeah. Now you know, talk. I stayed in Greensboro for seven for since nineteen seventy nine. Yes. You said Memphis just now. I know. I, just, I know. Yeah. And, and you know, when you start talking, yeah. you have to remember where did this happen. Yeah. 
and and you will find that to be true mm -hmm. in your work. <laughs> This this happened, but where? What? Yeah. When? <laughs> you know. No, I understand. Yeah. And what were you doing for the governor's office? I was special assistant to the governor, mm -hmm. and my job was to do several things. First of all, to work with the African American community mm -hmm. primarily. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, had an opportunity to work with other counties or uh, cities where the governor worked, I traveled with him, um, and um, also just did whatever needed to be done in the mm -hmm. governor's office. I was one of five people, four whites, and I was the only black uh, that met with him every morning, mm. so I never could be late, <laughs> and that's why I sometimes I'm late. <laughs> you weren't late today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, um, primarily serving the African American community, mm -hmm. but primarily just carrying the governor's message mm -hmm. to that community and, and serving as their liaison to the governor, because mm -hmm. you know you can't always meet with the governor. Right. But fortunately, he told people, when you talk to Carolyn, you've talked to me. Mm -hmm. And so that was a good thing. Yeah. They felt confident in getting their message to the governor, and I felt very comfortable in returning his answer to them. Okay. And, yeah. and he, he's one of the best governors I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And I've I met a few, yeah. and uh, he just was, was the same person, mm -hmm. no matter whether he was in a staff meeting a one on one. I mean, just a genuine good man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, the, in the in the decision to like become a county commissioner, why did you go for that office as opposed to like city council or something else? I wouldn't tell the city council that, but um, <laughs> you know, it happened to be what was available at sure. the time. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't choose one over the other. Okay. Uh, the city council was elected every two years, mm -hmm. county commission every four. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, the persons that were on the city council, you, I couldn't beat them. Mm -hmm. So this was this was the vacant position with with uh, Warren Dorsett leaving. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I chose that. But I, I think I would have liked either one. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why is that if you've ever been a person who was campaigning to win anything, you soon learn that um, you, you go for what you think you can win mm -hmm. at that time, and, um, and, you, and you go for what is perhaps so much like what you were doing on your other job. And that, that was it, because I worked with we had some storms and, and um, floods and whatever, and the counties usually were responsible for dealing with that mm -hmm. across the state. So I'd already worked with some of that, um, just helping African Americans get settled in homes and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. When, once, Because you know the water usually came to our side of town um, simply because of the low laying of the land. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd had some experience in working with that. And of course, with the people, I could have worked with either group. Mm -hmm. But um, much of what the county does, um, I did for the governor. Mm -hmm. And so what do you remember about your first campaign that you're running for yourself, as opposed to like assisting in other campaigns as like a community mm -hmm. organizer? Basically, um, once you know people and once you've, you've already worked with them, it's easier if they know you and know what you're capable and know of doing and know that if you say it, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. that, I, I think that, that was the key for me. Now, of course, um, you, you, you have to get out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, talk to people, and much of what I did with the NAACP was the same thing that I did for the governor. Mm -hmm. Now, people say, well, how, how could you do that? 
Well, it was because he was such a good man that he wanted to do what was right. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a lot of, of President Biden now, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there was very much difference in what I did then and what what I'm doing now. The good thing about what I did then and and um, and and what I'm doing now is. I'm able to get people in, help get people in jobs, making them aware of what's available in county government. You only need to apply. You might get it, you might not, mm -hmm. but you can't get it if you don't apply. Right. And so I, I think all of that was the same job. Mm -hmm. Just it's just that when I worked, uh, well, both positions really. Mm -hmm. whether it was for the governor or whether it's the county, mm -hmm. um, I could make things happen. Mm -hmm. um, now, as long as I was the volunteer in the community, I could push things and make them happen too. So everywhere that I've ever worked, I've been able to make a difference. Yeah. And, and that makes a difference. I, I know so many people that don't like what they do for a job. For sure. <laughs> and so I, I like that. I love it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what do you remember about first being on, being becoming a member of the county, becoming a county commissioner? Um, I was scared to death. Yeah. Although I, I'd worked at another level with right. the governor. People... People really want you to do what they want you to do. Right. And so one person is telling you on this side, you need to do so and so and so to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And someone else on the other side is unhappy with what you're trying to do to help this person achieve his or her goals. Mm -hmm. So just can you can you maintain if if you don't do the right thing? Right. You know? Um and you're never going to solve everybody's problems, right. but um, your problems need to be intact mm -hmm. with the community's problems. Right. And so what you do, you try to please the community because mm -hmm. you can't please everyone. Right. Um, how did your relationship with the community change at all when you're in this local position of power? Huh. Or did it not? It didn't change very much. I mean, mm -hmm. that's unbelievable, but it didn't change very much mm -hmm. because, um, you know, now it's perhaps um, just as challenging to to get things done. I mean, black people are still getting killed by the police. Right. Black people still aren't getting the better jobs, um, and it's always a challenge. Now, just this morning. I serve on the transportation board here, mm -hmm. and um, I had a meeting with that board. What happened is that um, maybe two years ago, we had an African-American black, well, let me start over there. Okay. We had an African-American woman who was serving as a staff person for that organization. Mm -hmm. And um, she, well, her she and, and her fellow employees had a um, a Halloween party, and at that Halloween party, one of the whites had a noose around his neck as his dress, mm. and um, when she reported it and talked about how offended she was by that, the the supervisor didn't think much of it. He it didn't bother him at all. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he was white. Sure. So one of the other board members and I, after talking with the woman, went and talked with the supervisor. He he just didn't didn't seem concerned at all. So we talked with the full board. Um, were able to get well. She she resigned, mm -hmm. and we were able to get severance pay for her as a result of her resignation mm -hmm. and to get some training for the entire staff mm -hmm. um, regarding racism and so forth. Right. Um, never bothered even think about that again. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this, this 
last month or so, um, two women were fired from the same plant. And it seems like they could have easily have been just reprimanded for what they did. What happened is one woman who was new uh, came to work at the, the transportation group and um, she asked the other woman about how she liked it and she said, well, I don't like it. She said, I don't know if you're making the right decision to come here. That woman went back and told the supervisor. Mm -hmm. So they fired her. Wow. So she spoke despairingly mm -hmm. about the company. Right. Well, who doesn't? I, I mean, yeah. every now and then, some company's going to do something that you don't like. Right. So when, when this employee told my city council co-worker that um, this had happened, she spoke to me about it, and she said, since both of us serve on the board, let's go in and talk to him. Now, he claimed he didn't even know what a noose was, but anyway, right. in this day and age. Right. <laughs> so in speaking to him, he, he basically did nothing. Mm -hmm. So this morning, we asked the chairman of the board to call a meeting, well, to, to have us meet in closed session with that board. Do you know that when we started talking with them, the lawyer says, well, um, this is the lawyer for the board who's at every meeting. Mm -hmm. He says, well, you can't talk about the employees uh, like this. So we said, no, we don't expect to talk about the employees. We want to talk about the, the manager. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, we're going to closed session, went into closed session, and um, as we started talking, the lawyer said, well, no, you can't talk about the employees. Now, you can talk about the manager, but you can't talk about the employees. He said, but you have to vote on it. The board may not want to vote, may not want to talk about it. So they took a roll call vote. There were 16 men and three women, including the two of us who spoke to them. Right. And what had happened is they had already met about it. Mm. We didn't know this. Mm -hmm. And um, he would not talk with us. And the issue was that when we were talking with him about the women, he says, um, well, I'm not going to talk about that noose again. I knew one of you would bring it up, and so I'm not going to talk about it. And he hung up the phone in our faces, wow. just like that. Wow. Now, we're board members. Right. I have never been on a board where a staff person hung up the phone on me. Right. They would not talk. They voted. Sixteen men mm -hmm. and the one woman voted against the two black women. Mm -hmm. And there were two black men on the board, even. Mm -hmm that voted against talking with us. Mm -hmm. I said, racism never stops. Mm -hmm. I mean, you won't even talk to your fellow board members right. about an issue like that. That's unbelievable. So I'm hot today. <laughs> you want to put that all on the yeah, record. <laughs> yeah, it's not over. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, 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 and, and, and some people think, oh, the higher you go in a job, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the more less. authority you have. Right. Well, the higher you go, you can get on the board. Yeah. You don't have any authority. Right. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. <laughs> You're subjected to it no matter what. No, it's always there. Mm-hmm. And then some African Americans don't want them to think that they're not just like them, mm -hmm. so they vote against you too. Right. You know. Which is not their best interest. No. I mean, I, I can't believe that the African American men mm -hmm. voted with the white men mm -hmm. to not even hear what we had to say. Right. See it. Yeah.
When I'm trying to think of how to go to the next question, then though. What <laughs> <laughs> the a, a, a loop in there? Right. When what are you? What do you think are important qualities for lead, for political leadership? I, w I would say, first of all, you have to love people. Mm -hmm. you, you have to enjoy being around people and um, know that um, if you're in a position where you can help folk, that's, that, that should be your priority. Mm -hmm. and, and that's always been mine mm -hmm. um, because there are so many people that don't know what to do when to do it, how to do it, and it's just natural for me. I mean, I'm no lawyer or anything, mm -hmm. but I know how to navigate through the system. Right. And that, that's, that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, too, um, you have to know how to work with other people. Now, for me, first and foremost, it's civil rights. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just I can't deal with sitting there just letting it pass. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for me, I, I, I want to work in the area of civil rights and make a difference for people. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I didn't say about my job with the governor, among other things, was I was the person who was expected to help him find African Americans to work in top positions. Mm. And so sixty-five, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars were the salaries I brought people wow. in for. Wow. If you can make that difference, yeah. do it. Yeah. Don't I mean don't be afraid because someone else will get the job if you don't. Right. You know. And and uh sometimes, you know, and I think this happens with Democrats too often. We think, okay, we, we've done enough now. Let's kind of slow down. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't slow down. I, I, I like a, a verse in the Bible that talks about work while it's day. Mm -hmm. Because no, when, when the night comes, no man can work. Right. And so that's what you have to do. I, I always met with that group of senior African Americans after they came on. I didn't leave them out there mm -hmm. to just work on their own. Right. So I met with them once a month. We talked about what we could do to make it better for our people mm -hmm. and leave some there in the jobs when we leave. You you need to be a mentor as much as you can. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud the the present governor's uh chief of staff worked in my office. Mm -hmm. I mean so that means that I brought not only she but several others along so that when I was gone, right now I can call down to Raleigh mm -hmm. and get some things. I can't get everything, right. but I can get some things done. Sure. And that, so, so I, I think that's, that's real important. Mm -hmm. What do you think you've learned campaigning for, campaigning in Greensboro specifically? Well, Greensboro is a good place to work, mm -hmm. um, just in general, but I, I think you've got an activist community mm -hmm. here that um, some of them, there's some, some older ones and there's some younger ones, mm -hmm. and while the younger ones will probably say, oh, the older ones won't ever leave, mm -hmm. but we, we'll go soon, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think that more than anything, you can get community support. Mm -hmm. um, our ministers, the Pulpit Forum is very active in this community. The young people are very active. And of course, those who've been around for a while are still very active. Mm -hmm. So you learn all of that. Mm -hmm. That um, you, you've got to bring some others along. Mm -hmm. But that cross section, you know, I think about churches. There are some churches where in Greensboro, there's probably not a person in the church that's over 30 years old. Mm -hmm. And then there's some that are older. Mm -hmm. I mean, that cross section just makes for a beautiful church, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's true with an organization. Mm -hmm. Because someone has lived through this 
that, that we're living through, mm -hmm. and then there'll be someone to follow us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what do you think uh, you've learned in comparing your first campaign as a commissioner to your most recent campaign? Wow, I, I think, um, well, perhaps what, what is a shocker to most sure. people is that you've got to raise some money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. you can do the organizing, all of that, mm -hmm. but you've got to buy signs, you, you, you've got to buy bumper stickers, you, you've got to have some radio or television ads, depending on the level. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you, just, you just have to know people. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not know the names, but you know you do the hey girl that that kind of thing sure <laughs> sure and always speaking to people absolutely in our community that's important mm -hmm. one of the first things folk was that she didn't speak to me <laughs> you know that kind of thing absolutely so it's important for you just just speak to everybody mm -hmm. and so you won't miss anyone mm -hmm. now you said well why is that so important I don't know but it makes a difference for us it does and I I think it it goes back to the days when I, I think in my own personal life, when I was in school and walking from from school the buses to the um, well, to walking to get off the school bus on home, there were older people sitting on the front porches, and you just walk down the street. Hey, Miss Jones. Hey, Miss mm -hmm. Brown. You know, mm -hmm. you spoke to everybody. Mm -hmm. People don't do that as much now, mm -hmm. but I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, they they don't know your name sometimes, mm -hmm. but they know. Oh, you know the lady that so and so and so that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, young people will especially pass you, not open their mouths, <laughs> and I just speak to them, <laughs> and they'll speak back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you're, do you? I think we're here, we're nearing toward the end of the interview. Is there anything you wish I had asked that I had not gotten to yet? Um, you know, n not necessarily, but I'll, I'll say this. Okay. It is very important for adults to work with their children, encouraging them when they're young, whatever it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Encourage them. It, it's positive mm -hmm. to do it. Um, I, I can remember that um, I would awaken some mornings to go to school, and my dad would have, um, we had some civil rights uh, songs being sung by different groups. Mm -hmm. He'd have those songs on, just singing along. He's cooking breakfast mm -hmm. and singing along. Um, and it was just good to know that my parents supported me in everything that I did. Right. Um, because some some young people don't get that support. Right. So so I, I would say to parents, it might not sound like what you want it to sound like. Right. But um, it's just good when your parents sit and talk to you about doing well in school and you know, I think everybody hears that. Oh, you better do good in school because um, you know that will determine how much you learn and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. You say, oh God. Schools at schools where they have speakers, mm -hmm. you know, people say that too. Mm -hmm. Graduation, whatever, but it makes such a difference. You can look back on your life, and when when your parents have encouraged you, especially if it's your daddy. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess it depends on the child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <Sure. laughs> but but when when parents have encouraged you to do things that um, sometimes. They weren't able to do, mm -hmm. couldn't afford to do it. Right. And um, but they are, they're saying to you now, if you do well in school, you'll be able to do this, that kind of thing. I, I think that makes a difference. Also, um, I'm a Christian, so I, I I'd say this, although some young people won't listen to what I'm saying. But the thing is. I learned how to do public speaking. I couldn't sing, but I was in the choir. I mean, 
if you are active in something, whether it's church, whether it's an organization, it, I always encourage young people to join the NAACP. Mm -hmm. Their primary, I guess, interest for young people is teaching them how to be leaders. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, I, I think that makes a difference too. Mm -hmm. um, that you've just got to learn how to work with people, how to bring other people along, mm -hmm. and, and, and how to encourage them. If you could do those things, I think that would be great. Okay, so we'll hit our wrap up questions and then uh, okay. we'll finish up. Do you think you, can you, do you have any favorite accomplishments as a county commissioner? Yeah, um, just this year, um, I, we, we were able to get a CARES grant from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And um, our government, um, and in fact, we're primarily Democrats, mm -hmm. Um, but our government was able to put a half million dollars into a food distribution program, mm. and I directed that program. Mm. We 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 had um, churches, the YMCA, mm -hmm. um, other uh, nonprofit groups, the Deltas, mm -hmm. um, several groups that helped distribute food. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were able to feed people in the midst of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that that just, for me, that that's, that's just great. Mm -hmm. Because it, it bothers me when I hear that this many kids went to bed hungry mm -hmm. tonight, last night, or whatever. So if, 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 um, if I were to say what I'd really like more than anything, was, was the fact that we were able to feed people. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a civil rights advocate, mm -hmm. so right at the top of that list is the fact that we have a minority women business enterprise program mm. where we're able to bring in black contractors to get more contracts. Mm -hmm. I hate to have to say to kids, you're on the free lunch program, mm -hmm. you know? I want their dads and moms to be working mm -hmm. so that they can have their kids feel like they are somebody. Right. Absolutely. So just working with those two programs, mm -hmm. um, we, we're doing a disparity study right now in our MWBE program and um, should have it in the next couple of months or so. Mm -hmm. That's going to mean that African-American contractors and other businesses we'll be able to get more contracts from us because mm -hmm. we'll be able to keep a better record of how it's done, what's done, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, as you know, this project is primarily about commemorating the 19th Amendment, mm -hmm. um, which gave women the right to vote, but as you know, it didn't give all women the right to vote. But it did. Um, it, um, when you're when we when you're thinking back on the Nineteenth Amendment, um, well, let me just start with this. Do you remember your first vote? Yes. Well, um, how did it go? It was great. Now, Georgia, although we're deep south, mm -hmm. you could vote in Georgia at age eighteen. Mm -hmm. So that was the same year that I cast my first vote. Was the same year that John F. Kennedy was elected president. Hmm. And so, I mean, everybody was excited <laughs> right. because he, he was a young man and um, just just one that we admired so much right. that was elected. So I was really excited by that. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember learning about, um, do you remember talking about politics with your mother? I know she you went on yes. those, that, that came yes. up before. Yes, mm -hmm. now, um, of course, one, one thing, my mother owned a dry cleaners, mm -hmm. and um, so anytime there was a campaign, um, she always had a little jar there to raise some money for someone, because mm -hmm. um, you always need that money. Right. So just talking with her about the importance of that, and she raised money for the NAACP. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you could help, even though there are folks who say, oh, I don't bother with that. that, mm -hmm. that some churches didn't bother with right. with, with politics, um, but the thing is, you could say to them, "Well, why don't you give a dollar? You know, 
do something. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so she did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. That real beginning of the local organizing yes, yes. and fundraising, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do, um, do you remember learning about women's history? Not as much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, was, um, I was very much involved with um, organizing across the country for the NAACP, mm -hmm. the youth vote. Mm -hmm. And that was more my contribution, mm -hmm. um, especially at the time when um, when I was 18, knowing that there were young people who were 18 also, mm -hmm. but still couldn't vote. And it wasn't just Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for me, that was it more mm -hmm. than anything. More than women now, specifically. Now, since living in Memphis, mm -hmm. and in Greensboro, sure. Uh, I have had an opportunity to work with Bennett College mm -hmm. a bit, and um, so they always have a commemoration and uh, celebrating that mm -hmm. vote, and, and I've been able to be on some of the programs as a speaker, mm -hmm. something of that nature. So that's primarily been my work with the women's vote. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's all of my questions. Well, let me just say this too. I just thought about this. Okay. It is tough being a woman trying to do anything where men are involved. It's just like this morning, as mm -hmm. I indicated, that, mm -hmm. that meeting. 16 men voted no for us mm -hmm. in working with, trying to make life better for this woman who lost her job. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that I've had three brothers and that has made me as tough as nails sometimes because I, I say to folk, I used to have to fight to keep the meat on my plate. <laughs> I mean, my mom would be at work and when we get home from school, she'd call to see that we were at home mm -hmm. and my brother would call, call me to the phone, get to the phone and nobody's on the phone. <laughs> and I get back to my plate, the meat's gone. <laughs> So I can tell you that it is tough. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get anything just because you're a woman. Mm -hmm. And so I say to women, toughen up. You know, we, 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 we can't just sit back and expect the men to always take the leadership role. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. All right.